I know some folks have said not the night videos because um, it's strange to have a voice with no picture. I mean, I listen to the radio, so it's pretty much the same thing. I really don't see how it's dangerous. I'm, it's probably less dangerous for me because I'm not, you know, I'm just looking at the road and not not looking at the camera. Uh, whereas I might, I'll just be honest, I, I can tend to be uh, distracted by the phone one word, Schneis or something, or <coughs> Tanakh or Gemara, um, hands-free, and uh, I'll still be able to keep my eyes on the road. Um, so uh, it's a little bit easier for, it's probably better for me just to sit and talk and run my big mouth. Um, I just heard about a congressman from North Carolina withdrawing his concession, and I'm asking Congressman Faso, please withdraw your con concession. Let's try to recount with the absentees and everything. Uh, I just don't believe, I really still can't believe. Why is only the Democrats are doing this when it was a very close race and the Republican is just stepping down? And I know Congressman Faso is a gentleman, um, but in a case like this, with such a bad candidate like like uh, like uh, Delgado, please, please consider withdrawing your concession. Um, our friend here, Gabriel Labrescu, I'm probably butchering that name. I think he might be one of my Hungarian lance light. Um, my family is uh, Hungarian my mother's father's side uh, and I uh, I mean actually where they came from I guess now would be Romania but they consider themselves Hungarian they spoke Hungarian um, by Zeta he tells a story you know, growing up he only spoke Hungarian until he went to school and he didn't speak Yiddish though he spoke Hungarian and he told a story about how you know his father sent him to go buy a Hungarian newspaper living in Lower East Side and a blind man, you know, was trying to cross the street, and he said to him in Hungarian, he said, you know, little boy, come help me cross the street, please. And, you know, he had the glasses and the cane and everything. And, and uh, so then after he helped him cross the street, um, my Zeta asked this man, how did you know that I speak Hungarian? And he said, well, I saw you were carrying that Hungarian newspaper. So... It's just uh, this story. I remember I did my sixth grade social studies report. Everyone had to do a report on a country, so I did mine on Hungary. People asked, why did you do on Israel? Even then, I wasn't a Zionist. Um, <laughs> I was like, well, what do I have to do with Israel? My family came from Hungary. They didn't come from Israel since, you know, thousands of years ago. And... Um, was when I was like, I wasn't even really from then, I was just like starting a little bit, not, not even at all really, I went, I went to Hebrew school, and it was a from Hebrew school, but I, I wasn't, you know, it was a little later, it was more like 8th grade, ninth grade, that I started to become Shabbat Shabbos and things like that, um, so anyway, um, my Zayd Alavashol, remember he got me a, a Hungarian newspaper, got some things from the Hungarian consulate. Um, interesting, it's all very interesting. So this is just memories. I might be wrong, maybe you're not Hungarian. But. So you, you asked Gabriel, I thank you for the question, um, to explain about the different types of Hasidic hats. It's interesting, this evening, at work, I was giving a sermon about Hanukkah, and I was discussing how during Hanukkah we wear our weekday hats. Uh, in most cultures, there are certain rabbis who wear a strimal just for Hanukkah lacht. I know the rabbis from Biala, Munkach, Munkach, also the current rabbis of Munkach and then of our Biala Eneklach. Um, and um, I'm thinking Nadverna, 
place in Burke. Just trying to remember which which rep is where Streimlach by Kanakalech, the Kalavar Rebbe. Kalva, I guess both Kalavar Rebbe's. Uh, uh, not really in the same league. Uh, I, and I don't mean any insult to Kalavar Yishalayim, but and, uh, you know, it's a little different. Um, it's a big sadik, and I just do whatever it is, but my rep is Kalavar else? Well, a few others. I'm just thinking, trying to remember what I used to every week go to the newsstand and buy Koha Lam Kulay and get all the pictures of the Rebbes. And so Hanukkah you'd have, you know, all the Nutmerner Rebbe playing violins. It looks so cool to see it. Then you hear the recordings of some of the big Sadikim from Nutmerner and they didn't really know how to play the violin, but, um, but, but it was very holy, nonetheless. Uh, I wonder if my that I have, I, I, my Rebbe also. I'm although the Kav Rebbe is my Rebbe, but also Zayn Rosenbaum from Bloomingburg. So my Rebbe, that uh, Rebbe from Bloomingburg. I don't think he plays the violin though. I have to get him a violin. So um, a fiddle. Yeah, he old mitten fiddle and I he mitten bass. So. Um, what else? What, what else can we uh, can we discuss there about the the hats? So then, some of the rabbis wear kulpikas when they light the Hanukkah lech. Um, a kulpika is a rabbanishazach, like the rabbanim. In Europe, it wasn't a Hasidic thing. The Shrine also really wasn't. But in general, the Rabbanim and Ashkenaz all week long were a Kulpik and Shabbos wore Shrine. That was the old Minug, uh, a sign of being a Rav. And, then, and now it's become just a Rebbish thing. But it was that in mind that I, I started. Uh, when I saw on eBay a Kulpika, I, even though, you know, Sap or Kalif, they don't, but I know you know, my family going back to Chavis in, in, in Europe. Stomach, that's, how, that's how Rabbanim went. And so, just, uh, you know, same thing, you know, you see, uh, you know, I was watching President Bush's funeral, and you saw the, the Orthodox priests, the, the Metropolitans, they're called, the, it's like, uh, instead of a patriarch in America, they saw the Metropolitan, as you say, the Orthodox Church. And I was talking to one of my colleagues, who's an Orthodox priest, you know, we were discussing that, and uh, and then he saw all the other galachim. They all had, the, you know, they were Episcopal. They all had their um, robes and, and sashes and stoles and all kinds of things. And you know, I you know, and so I think Rabbanim they should go like this. You know, in England, I know the Rabbanim. They wear robes. They, um, now the chief rabbi of England, he wears a blue robe. Um, you know, and, and it's to represent that he's a rabbi. You know, it's a, and and I think in in Italy, in like Rome, the chief rabbis they wear white robes, and it's just a custom for when you're, you know, in different communities, and and so you know, Chassidish Levush. It, uh, I think it's fitting for Abonim to have some kind of a, a, a costume. I don't know, a, 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 a lavush, you know, it's, it, it shows respect, it's covered in Torah. I understand we're not priests, we're not, you know, but it's, um, it's not like how in these churches, the, the, the liturgical churches where they have priests. But that being said, you know, in England, in the old days, the Abonim would wear collars also. I was thinking, I'm a chaplain in, a, in an institution, and I was thinking I, I wanted to start to wear a collar, but the, our collared clergy were not too fond of the idea. Um, I mean, I have like a, a costume collar from eBay that sometimes I wear when I do certain weddings, depends on the crowd that I'm dealing with, but uh, you see pictures of, of Aaron Cohen. Look up a picture of Aaron Cohen. It was a rough, uh, he was a 
professor at Jules College, modern Orthodox rabbi. Um, you know, there's Encino, Gemaras, and Chomish, and, and books of the Bible, and so forth. He writes commentaries there, and so forth. So he, he's someone who we've, we've all gained something from, you know. And uh, I saw a picture of him. He looked he, you know, like a, you know, very pious, with, you know, clean-shaven, no visible head covering, and a, and a, and a collar. And... Um, and you'd see the other chief, the chief rabbis, they have like a different type of collar thing. Now they don't wear like that anymore, but they still uh, liturgically wear the robes. And I think they have a special hat, also liturgical hat. I know also uh, liturgical vestments, they call it. I think in, in um, Australia also the modern Orthodox rabbis wear liturgical vestments. And, you know, it's part of the reason I, as a rabbi, that wear a chassidish shalavush, but uh, and even a shtikla rabbi shalavush. You know, the, and with, the, with wearing the kolpik, that's something I just do at home. I don't, I, I, I don't think I've ever worn it in the street. Um, but when I'm at home and it's a special day that I want to honor, to b'shvat, b'shchodesh. Not every rosh chodesh I put it on. Depends how I'm feeling. It smells a little weird, and I'm a little allergic to it. You know, it, it's fur. You know, it's old. It says it's from like Far Chavetz Chaim. I don't know. Someone, one of my friends, the, the West New Yorker Rebbe, he, he said he thinks it's a spotic, but it's it's hard to see in the pictures. It is very brown. He said, well, in the old days the spotikas were brown. Maybe I could color it a little. I don't know. Put some white paint on it. I, I remember I used to for a drama. You know, I would put white paint in my hair and it would look like gray hair maybe to put a little white paint uh, you know I don't want it would wash right out but you know maybe put a little white paint in the spotic and the, the culpit and then it would be a little bit more obvious that it's a culpit and not a spotic I don't but I'm pretty sure it's a culpit the way it, anyway you know today the Rebbe Sha'edekluf on Shabbos when they're Bachrim wear culpits and then certain Rebbe's wear a culpic on special occasions. It's a minute like that in all of Chernobyl. Not all of Chernobyl, because I understand the Hornstipler Rebbe from Milwaukee doesn't wear one, but you know, the um, square in Chernobyl, Rachmastrif. Well, Rachmastrif doesn't, doesn't wear a culpic. I'm not sure. Uh, but square and and, uh, and, 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 and and Chernobyl, they wear the culpic because. Um, like in Babov, I think the Agnikluf were a culpa because with the Rebbe, the old Kedusha Tzian were a culpa, I think, all the time, but uh, but the current Rebbe's in Babov, they don't wear a because their father didn't uh, say this, you know. Um, I'm trying to think, who, were, oh, who else? Bells, he used to wear a culpa, now there's a spotic taka. Um, I think there's certain occasions he still wears a culpa, I'm not sure. Mostly now the spotting in bells, and then Shabbos is tribal. Um, who, 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 let's think of some of the other rebbes who wear culpics. Vishnitz. Last night I was by the Vishnitz rebbe. He wasn't wearing a culpic. I asked from the Hasidim. They said that it's because um, it's still in the year of Avelis. Maybe next year we'll get a culpic. I said, you know, I want to come see something. You know. Same thing, why doesn't he wear a colorful Bekesha? Doesn't wear a Kulpik, you know? I'm, 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 I'm coming to the Tish, I want to see something. I want to, you know? So, uh, but he's still in the year for his father. So, but I think some of, I think his brother, Beit Shemesh, though, did put on the Kulpik, but he probably still has it from his bar mitzvah, I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe I'm exaggerating. And then the, the stomach, the, 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 the nephew, the Anacle Borough Park, he probably already put on a culpit. I don't know. It's, it's so fascinating to me, you know, now that there's a vision of Sarebbe in every town, you know, it's like, but there's still two in B'nai Brock, and one, one of them goes, so I, I guess that's why he didn't go to Yushalayim, you know, because sort of, he knew he, he's going to have a cousin who's going to be Rebbe soon, so they just both stayed in, in B'nai Brock, you know, so... Um, so Gabriel, Gabriel, he asked about uh, to to talk a bit about the uh, the different hats that the different Hasidim wear 
I don't know really that much about the significance of these different hats. I could just tell you what I know. Um, he said, asked about the hat I wear, the hat they wear in business, the hat they wear in gear. Uh, he didn't ask about soccer and this and that. Um, Sopper is interesting. There are two main hats that you'll see, weekday hats you see in Sopper. There's the Plachiga hit and the Stoffener hit. So the Plachiga hit is the, the flat one. People say it's like a frisbee something. And the Stoffener hit is more like a bowler hat. In general, they'll say the, the more Rabbanish or Rebbesha people, they wear the Plachiga hit. And the more uh, balabatisha people they wear, stuff in a hit. Generally, you know, you're never going to see stuff in a hit with black socks during the week. You might see certain people wear stuff in a hit during the week in white socks on Shabbos, but generally not. But um, usually someone wears a stuff in a hit during the week. Um, we'll, wear, uh, we'll wear long pants on Shabbos, but not always. Um, in fact, the matter is, there are big rap on him, die on him, wear stuff in the hit. You know, and sometimes even with the rabbi Shirekel. Not generally with the Bekisha during the week, but the rabbi Shirekel. Again, a Bieber hit, whether it's a Ahoyche hit or a Plachige hit, Flache hit, generally, if someone's wearing a rabbi Shirekel or a Bekisha during the week, it's it goes only really with with the uh, with the rabbi hat, with a, with a, uh, um, a Bieber hit. Um, I, I remember, and then, uh, so, uh, some of the, there are certain people who identify someone with Samar or not really, you know, they might be Rabbanim, Epis, something else, and they wear a Hoichahit, which I wear, the high hat. Um, the, the story goes, uh, Samar Rav saw a Bocher with a Hoichahit, and he asked him, is it any more expensive than the plastic hit? That it's more material would think it should cost more so uh, he said no it's, it's the same price so then the Samar Rebbe said that, so then it's it's of less value because there's more schaira with less um, with less uh, you know um, less money you know less, it's, it's more schaira and it's the same price, that means that the flat hats are more valuable per inch than the high hats. Although the flat hats tend to be a little bit wider. Um, uh, but not always. Um, in general, the hats that most of the Rebbe's wear tend to be wider, brimmed, than the hats that the, the common folk wear. If, if the common folk are wearing a Bieber hit. Interesting thing that I've noticed, in general, the same type of communities that they wear a, a Hoyche hit, if you don't wear a Hoyche hit, if you're more Balabatish, wear a short jacket, or this, you'll wear a bend-up hat, which is different than the Stoffner hit. In general, the Stoffner hit and the bend-up hat are, are much cheaper than the, than the Hoyche hit. Uh, or the, the either of the Bieber hits. Um, there are Rebbe's uh, other than Satmar wear Plachik hit, Kloisenberg. They wear, and you see, like the Kloisenberger Rebbe is from, from Erzurl. His son wears like such a Zayab, right to hit. It's such a wide hat, you know, it goes. That part of the thing is that Bacher doesn't wear a wide hat. Bacher will wear a hat on Shabbos generally. And a strim, uh, not wearing a strimal, unless in Tolosar. The Ushleimer, you didn't wear the flat hat hats, you know, Tolosar, until seven meets up in the bar, like even the, the Litvisha Ushalmi, they wear like this, you know, Shlomo Zaman Orbach wore a hat like that, like, like Samar. Uh, it's Ushalmi style also, um, a Jerusalem style. Um, but then, you know, the, so the, the, the wider high hats tend to be rubbish style. I have one that's, it's not extremely wide, but it's a little bit wider than the hat I wear every day that I will usually wear on special occasions, you know, like I went to see the governor the other night, or go to a chasna where it's not appropriate for me to wear a strimal. 
something like that. Um, you know, or, or any you know special formal occasion. So it's not appropriate for me to wear a strimal. I'll, I'll wear a brighter hit. You know, last night was Hanukkah, so that's the interesting thing. It's, but the hat I wear isn't so bright, and I'm a tall guy. Who's the guy with the big, big head? Big head. Big, big head. Anybody knows where that's from. Um, so, uh, so it doesn't look so strange for me to wear a, a, a particular bright to hit. Some people have said maybe I should wear a Bismar bright to hit, but I couldn't really find one. They're not so easy to find, and they're a little bit more expensive. I, I was going to get like a Plachik bright to hit, which is a little bit higher than the regular Plachik hit, but I just I realized it doesn't fit with me. I tend to wear my pace behind my ears. That's one thing, you know, with a Plachik hit, it looks funny if you wear a pace behind your ears. Some people do it. But it's a little out of the ordinary. Most people, their way are causing the pious. And me, I, you know, I work Svish and the guy, if you know, like I, I work in the, in, the, in the Gentile world and I work in the cure and things. It's just, it's, I don't think it's worthwhile for me to wear the pious down all the time. Shop is Yanta with the Strymel. It looks funny with, you know, without the same thing even. I uh, like the Hanukkah left. I'll, I'll go. Usually I'll go to, if I go to the mikvah, I go to the mikvah. If I can't go to the mikvah, I'll still get my pace a little wet, bring them down. Um, you know, for the Hanukkah left. But um, but all week long, although sometimes I feel a little uncomfortable. I'm in Monroe and I'm the only one who's my pace up, other you know, or Bloomingburg or somewhere. But the, I, I I am where I am and I am who I am. And, Rebbe from high school, Marshall Weinberger, he, he didn't have, you know, he'd always roll up his pace behind his ears, and for a while, then, like, it became like a dreadlock, so he just looked like, wearing them down behind his ears, he kind of looked like, you know, one of these, uh, like, uh, settlers or something, then he, he stopped doing that, but whatever it was, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, there's a rabbi who does an uh, Ostrov Hensen rabbi. I met him once, I remember. That's how he wears his pants. For a few years, Rabbi Weinberger was doing that. I don't know why I'm talking so much about Rabbi Weinberger today, but. Um, so, um, in general, the the Bieberhitten are a distinctly Jewish style. It's not really exactly um, a. a, a, a I, I'm not aware, really, that type of style being worn uh, by non-Jews. Are those similar styles, the Amish and so forth, and certain, you know, um, pastoral, you know, Parson type characters. Someone told me Parson the other night. I love that. I mean, we still talk about taking Parsonage, you know, Parsonage allowance. So, uh, so, so I. I, I I, I thought that was cool, especially consider like I passed through Honesdale, Pennsylvania on my way to work, which I didn't, I should not have said, and uh, and that's where they wrote the song Winter Wonderland. So you know, in the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that he is Parson Brown. So uh, I I got a kick out of that being called Parson. Maybe that's you know I, w I was talking about you know ordaining women as Orthodox clergy so they can work as chaplains and something like that. that that's, that's what you should call a parson. I like that. I don't even know what it means, but it, you know, like I know pastor means a shepherd. I think pastor is a fine word. I don't have a problem with being called pastor. Reverend, you know, in England they would call the rabbis reverend, and, and in America, a cantor, a chazan, a sheichet, you know, if he doesn't have smich as a rabbi, a sheichet, a moil, would be called reverend. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm comfortable with Jews using the title reverend. I think we should bring that back. And, and so, too, I think women clergy could be called reverend. I think that's fine and appropriate. Minister, ministering. You know, it's not rabbi. You know, Rebbitson, no. It's, it's totally uh, appropriate. Um...
what other, you know, give some kind of letter of recommendation or le a letter of endorsement from a shul or whatever, and that's good enough, you know, that's, that's all you really need, you know. You can, you can go and get, a, get an MDiv or whatever, you know, if that's what you need also, I don't know. But. So, depends on the job, you know, get, get CPE credits and so forth. Yeah. The, um... At, at the, you know, the same thing, you know, the Catholic Church nuns are not, you know, ordained clergy, they're not even a deaconess or whatever, but like they, um, and they're talking about making women, a, it could be a deaconess, but, uh, but a, a, a nun could be a, a, a chaplain, so why can't a rabbit be a chaplain? I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm very supportive of that idea. You know, I see, it, in, in the DOC where I work, there are two women's prisons, and um, I think one doesn't have a rabbi and one does, or maybe they both have rabbis. But again, why is the rabbi the chaplain in the women's prison? The rabbi should be a chaplain in the women's prison. Um, And and, the, and and I know the DOC would be fine with that because they in, in the, one of the women's prisons they have a woman uh, who's an imam's wife I guess the equivalent of a Muslim rabbitson and, and she's a chaplain in the, in the women's prison um, the. But back to, to the different hats, which again, um, so why am I saying that there's particularly Jewish styles? The Bieber hit and R and the bend up and the even the stuff in the hit are not. Well, first of all, those are types of hats. You know, you look back, you know, Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, you know, Charlie Chaplin, they wore hats like that. Um, these were styles. And they're, they're a little different. Some of them are pretty much the same. You know, again, the Three Stooges, whatever. Look at these old movies. This is, these are hats that were worn, you know, in the secular society. You didn't really see a Bieber hit in the secular society. That being said, though, you asked about Vishnitz. Now, Vishnitz, the hat is very similar to the hat I wear. They don't wear the bright hit. They don't wear the wide-brim hats. Even the Rebbe's, even the Rebbe's families, they don't wear wide-brim hats. They wear small brims, same thing as Glenn Rebel wears a small brim hat, square, I think also, if I can remember, tend to be the smaller brims. Um, so then, uh, the um, difference in visionness and I think also Strykov, I thought I read that on Wikipedia, is that the brim is on the right side, which generally in America, hats, I'm not the brim, the bow. There's like a little bow, right? It's on the right side. Usually men's hats have the bow on the left side and women's hats have the bow on the right side in America. Same thing, clothes over right, women's go right over left, except the Hasidic men's styles also go right over left for Kabbalistic reasons. Even some of the, the sh go like that. Um, in certain communities. The... And, and so too, you know, generally a frock that you would get, even though that's not a Jewish style, Prince Albert frock, Usually those tent holes would be right over left. Some people I've seen wear them left over right. I remember I, my Rosh Shiva, he should have four shleva of Baba Branch people. I remember he would wear his frock, even though he came from a Hasidic family, he came from Gera Hasidim, but he would wear his frock left over right. Um, but some of the Hasidim, they have these freckles with like, Buttons that have like a slit covering them, so single-breasted crackle. I've seen that in Babov and in Gare. Um, Gare also they'll wear like um, 
It's just like bathrobes, you know. Even during the week, things like that. They don't usually have the tish bekushes, just a plain bekusha. Anyway, the main difference, like gear and slanim, and really this Yushalmi style as well. A lot of like Breslover and even the Litvish Yushalmi, they will have a round top bowler hat that has a, I know in Hebrew they say like a seret, like a film, like a strip around the, the corner, the edge. That's the style in the Gera Hasidim, the Slonimer Hasidim. And there's no, it's not indented on top, it's round on top. Generally the, the stuff that are hit by Satmar also, they're round on top. Some wear them indented. It's similar to the the Hamburg, but the Hamburg is indented. Um, like a lot of Litvish or Abundant wear a Hamburg. The, um, whereas the, what we call the bend up hat is indented in the middle. And you, when you go to the hat store, it's actually, it starts out round and they have a machine that like creases it, which is interesting. Um, and that crease is pretty permanent. You can't really try to pop it out. It doesn't, it doesn't really work. Um, those bend up hats, you know, you'll see that like in certain families in Kloisenberg, particularly more Balabatish families who might wear short jackets every week. You see that especially in Karl and Stolen. Um, and Munas Yisrael, a lot of people wear that. Although again, in Karl and Stolen, the Shalmis might wear the flat hats. You know, the Rebbe's Gaba in Karl and Stolen wears a flat hat. And the Rebbe wears a Bieber hit. A lot of those communities, the Bieber hit will be the style of the bend up or the round hat that the Rebbe wears, but it'll be a, made of the Bieber hit material, the felt, the velvet material instead of the felt material. Um, and the. Um, Uh, the story goes was that the, um, the people heard that the uh, Stolen Rebbe was on an airplane, and his Gaba, who's Yushalmi Yid, wears a plachik a hit, you know, and it kind of looks a little bit more, you know, he's older than the Rebbe, <laughs> he has, you know, white beard, and the Rebbe still, even now, he's already probably in his, close to his 60s by now, certainly in his 50s, but he's a Zeta already, but he, uh, uh, he, his beard is still brown, you know, and he and he's, his pay is behind his ears and necktie and uh, uh, a, a plain frock, you know. And <laughs> the story goes that the um, the stolen Rebbe's Gabba's Sigish Delta minion of the airplane, he, he organized the minion, and then he went to the bathroom and like they're all waiting for the minion, and then he comes back and the Rebbe's yelling at him. You know, everyone's waiting for you. Why are you doing this? And everyone's like, what are you doing? Why are you yelling at the Rebbe? Because they assumed that the Rebbe was the Gaba and the Gaba was the Rebbe. And this is, they, sell, they say the same story in the summer of Zechatak, Kodesh, as Chosi Yelena, Kodesh, all made him sing Shiva for, uh, for his daughter, Achmal Atzlan, in America. And the, uh, the, the last... Uh, one who called himself the Babacher Rebbe came to be Menachem Ovel. That was, I think, the only time in their life they ever met. It was around Halloween time. They were talking about Halloween and, and, and Halacha and things, and Rebbe Kotler was there. The whole story. Um, but anyway, you know, he had a gab also. Always get kicked with a Hasidish yid. You know, he had a Hamburg or stuff in the head and the white beard. And there's a younger man with a bend-down hat and a short jacket. And... Uh, He's talking, you know, and then Yanim and things, and and the Samarev like made a joke. He's like, who, who's the? Why is the Gaba talking like he's thinking he's a Rebbe? <laughs> you know, and uh, and they, and then the, uh, he asked the Gaba. He said, well, look at your Hasidim, you know, and he said, no, no, this is a Rebbe. So it's a uh, Galechter, you know, but uh, anyway, why in Lubavitch they wear the bend down hat or they, all the you know. It also has to do with, all of these things have to do with, because in Russia, the Tsar 
made a law that you can't wear Jewish styles. That's why he stopped wearing the strimal. That's why he put in the spudik. The spudik was more of a... It was actually a Mongolian style. Um, and, and different things along those lines with the... Uh, why these things changed. Um, and so to the hats, uh, the frock that uh, were in Lubavitch instead of a, a regular Bekesha, because uh, in the old days, the old Yushalmi, you know, Chabad Hasidim, the Pusta Hasidim, they're still around, some of them wear Shtraim and so forth, the old Yushalmi Eden, um, or Chabad, the old Chabad Hasidim, you know, and that's, a, that's the story. Um, so, uh, and so that's why, and, and same thing, Litvish, why they stopped wearing a Shtraim, you know, look at the Vilner Gon, wear, wear a Shtraim or uh, something, you know, and uh, it had to do with the, the Tsar made a decree, and that's that's the history. Um, uh, did we cover all the different hats? And basically, I mean, those they're basically five major what we call weekday hats, or what the Bachrim would wear even on Shabbos that you see in the Hasidic world. The flat hat that they wear, the satmer, that's the thing. In Kloisenberg, the Rebbe wears a flat hat, but the Hasidim wear high hats. Um, the high hat, those are the two, like Rebbe hats. And then uh, among the Rebbe's, they also have like a, 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 on weekdays, their hat will be like a, a Bieber hit with a, you know, but with the style of the round hats. And then there's the, the, the three different types of round hats. The the one that's round, plain round, is like Gare and Slonim and uh, Yushalmi, and then the and then there's the the bend up hat and the stuff in the hit the satmer wear, and and uh, also like uh, Veen and things like you know, and then on Shabbos is a, is a strong, and then there's a the bend down hat, which is worn in Lubavitch and Litvisha, but then Litvisha Rabbanim might wear either a hat or a, or a stuff in a hit. Rabbi Fishman wears like a stuff in her head, like a satmer stuff in her head with a Lubavitcher frock and, uh, you know, a uh, kapata and, and uh, you know, and then uh, and the Hamburg. It's a Rabbanisha style. And then, uh, but like I said, you know, Shalayim, the literature, they also might wear a flat hat. And then, uh, and then Shabbos, is, and then we talked about this, the Kolpik, and uh, that only the, the either before they're married, the, the Rabbisha kids, or once someone becomes a rabbi, they wear by Hanukkah lech, the certain certain rabbis, or by Rosh Chodesh Tish, or Tuvash And then, um, and then there's the, um, the Strymel, which in Yushalayim, Yushalayim even Bachar might wear. And, uh, and, 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 and most places only after you're married. And again, Yushalayim, even literature, they might wear Strymel, Shabbos. And then uh, the Gera Hasidim and the Alexander Hasidim and Oster Hensen and Amshinov, they'll wear a uh, uh, spudik. And, uh, and, you know, in Amshinov, the Rebbe wears um, a plain reckle, a plain hat, you know, and things like that. So uh, these are on the weekdays, you know, like, like the Gera hat, you know, um, you know and, and some of the other Polish. Uh, um, I forgot. There's one one rabbi we're close with. His his son, and he wears a spudik, and, and, and I think he wears like a spudik with with white socks because he, you know, he 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 made you know, not his father wears long pants, but he he wears white socks because he's an Adam by more Hungarian and uh, more. My wife is friends with his rabbitson, but I forgot the name now of the the. Um, I mean, I know the family name Sekula, but I don't remember. Uh, we're from from uh, from Tarvadas, a very chosh of big Talmud Chachamim. Um, well, let me put up my hat and get in the house. Go light Hanukkah lech. Um, so you you have certain things that are not exactly the same everywhere. Different minhagim, different things, and that's. That's just how how things go, and that's how these things develop. And uh, now he made the now he made uh, shidduch with square. I don't know if it was his son or his daughter who made the shidduch, 
So I'm wondering, does that mean he has to wear the boots now? I don't know. So I didn't get into the boots. Uh, the different types of gartlach and the different ways to wear pay, so I spoke about that a little bit. So, uh, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. It doesn't matter. All that matters. Doesn't matter what type of hat you wear. Doesn't matter what type of ekasha you wear. Doesn't matter what you know. I mean, echlachdos the ganze zach. People ask me why you wear a blue bekasha, why you wear a white bekasha, why you wear a silver bekasha, why you you carry a cane, you wear a kolpik. Echlachdos the ganze zach. It doesn't mean anything. All that matters, and I don't carry a cane that much. It depends if I'm in a bad neighborhood and I kind of want some. A weapon, just in case, so no one should hurt me, you know. Or you know, it depends what I'm doing. Or you know, I don't have very many occasions to to carry a cane. That is um, not blood. That is uh, donut uh, uh, from Sufganios, uh, the the jelly. Um, you know, uh, you know, what, what, it doesn't mean anything. It's it, what matters is what's in your heart. That's what's important. You can wear you can wear no yarmulke at all and be very elachid with a, with with a, with an uncovered head. With, you know, as long as you keep halacha, I know I understand it. It's a halacha to to, to cover your head. But it, it's a halacha. It's a minute. It's not it's not make her a dim. But it's what we do. So thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment and free lecha Baby, baby, where are you for leaving me here?